In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord saw that the wickedness of men was great on the earth, and that the thoughts in his heart fashioned nothing but wickedness all day long. The Lord regretted having made men on the earth, and his heart grieved. I will rid the earth's face of men, my own creation, the Lord said, and of animals also, reptiles too, and the birds of heaven, for I regret having made them. But Noah had found favour with the Lord. The Lord said to Noah, Go aboard the ark, you and all your household, for you alone among this generation do I see as a good man in my judgment. Of all the clean animals, you must take seven of each kind, both male and female. Of the unclean animals, you must take two, a male and its female and of the birds of heaven also, seven of each kind, both male and female, to propagate their kind over the whole earth. For in seven days' time, I mean to make it rain on the earth for forty days and nights, and I will rid the earth of every living thing that I made. Noah did all that the Lord ordered. Seven days later, the waters of the flood appeared on the earth. The Word of the Lord The Lord will bless his people with peace. O oh, give the Lord, you sons of God, give the Lord glory and power. Give the Lord the glory of his name. Adore the Lord in his holy court. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The Lord's voice resounding on the waters, the Lord on the immensity of waters, the voice of the Lord full of power, the voice of the Lord full of splendor. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The God of glory thunders. In his temple they all cry, Glory! The Lord sat enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits as king forever. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Open our heart, O Lord, to accept the words of your Son. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples had forgotten to take any food, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. Then he gave them this warning. Keep your eyes open. Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. And they said to one another, it is because we have no bread. And Jesus knew it, and he said to them, Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you not yet understand? Have you no perception? Are your minds closed? Have you eyes that do not see, ears that do not hear? Or do you not remember, when I broke the five loaves among the five thousand, how many baskets full of scraps did you collect? They answered, Twelve. And when I broke the seven loaves for the four thousand, 
How many baskets full of scraps did you collect? And they answered, Seven. Then he said to them, Are you still without perception? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Puzzled. That was the feeling I had when I finished reading the Gospel for the first time when I prepared for this reflection. How could the apostles not understand that Jesus was the bread? How can they worry about having not enough bread after witnessing Jesus fed 5,000 and 4,000 people with only five and seven loaves? But that was my first reaction. After further reflection, I realized that I am no different from the the apostles, or even worse than them. I remember that during my school days, I may be able to score good grades, but I had no understanding at all. The more embarrassing thing is to think that I studied engineering before, and yet, if you ask me anything about engineering today, I will smile and just smile. Yes, in our lives, we may know things without understanding the true meaning. After a spiritual retreat, we may feel that we've got all the answers in life. We may feel very high, only to feel disappointed and frustrated a few months later because we realize that nothing has changed in our lives. In our daily life, it is easy to miss the messages that God is telling us because we may know things about God, we may know the theology, we may do many rituals, but we miss building that relationship with God. And when we do not have that relationship, we do not know Him. And consequently, we don't trust Him. There are many times we may miss God's message for us because we are preoccupied only with what is immediate. Our hunger for success, or our thirst for acknowledgement from the people around us, be it our family or friends, or our obsession over the stock market, or any distraction that occupy our minds. The restless heart will pull us away from the vision of God in our life, especially if our life is not founded on the rock, on Christ. When our soul found the true foundation in Christ, we know that as long as we have God, all is well. In the first reading, we heard the story of the cleansing through the water. As Christians today, our baptism is the cleansing we received when we said yes to live in Christ, when we said yes to have Christ as the foundation in our lives. We have the baptism photos. We have the baptism certificate. The question is, do we understand what our baptism is all about? From my study in engineering, I understand that memorizing the theory and formula doesn't mean I understand the concept in my mind. From my experience in spiritual retreats, I learned that understanding about God and God's teaching doesn't mean I believe them in my heart. Today, we are invited to remember all that God has done for us. Just like Jesus asked the apostles to remember how he fed the thousands of people, we are reminded that through our baptism, we commit ourselves to live in God's way. Let us then live according to what the Lord has taught us. Brothers and sisters, we will begin our Lenten journey together tomorrow. Let us pray for one another that through this journey, we may grow deeper in faith, that we may truly understand, we may truly believe and live our lives as true followers of Christ. 
As children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, so that we may always long for that food by which we truly live. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.